Praise the Lord. So Lord put this in my spirit earlier in the week. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 starting at the first verse. I don't know if Caleb's got the Bible back up, but if he don't do You should have your Bible anyway. Amen. Yes, amen. Matthew chapter 4 starting at the first verse. Would you stand with the reading of the word this morning? Matthew chapter 4. Yeah, he's got the verse. Starting at the very first verse. I'm going to read about 11 scriptures this morning, so just be patient. Matthew 4, 1 says, And Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. Now just let me just stop right there just for a second. I want you to get your mind focused on it is written. If you read in your Bible, the devil said, For it is written, it's not in red letter, because it's the devil saying that. And you see what the devil said. He said, give charge over everything. Throw yourself off of the earth. And, and, you, and you, you know, you'll, you'll cause the angels to come. The devil said that. Okay? And he said, if, it is, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. He shall give his angels charge over him. And in their hands they shall bear you up. Lest you dash your feet against the stone. Jesus said. Now this is Jesus talking. It is written again. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up again in an exceedingly high mountain and showed him on the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning, Lord, I praise you. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor this morning, Lord, for your power, for your anointing. And God, Lord, for the word of God that's about ready to come forth, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. God, I thank you this morning, Lord, that you're in this place to touch, you're in this place to heal, you're in this place to set free, you're in this place to save. God, you're in this place to be manifest as the Holy Ghost, you have the authority to be man manifested in this place. Holy Ghost, you have the authority to do what you need to do. Holy Ghost, go through this sanctuary this morning, searching our hearts, knocking on our heart's door. And Father, we'll never fail to praise and thank you for that. Now, Lord, I pray, Lord, to let your anointing be upon your servant. And Father, we'll never fail to praise and give you honor and glory because it's in your mighty name will we pray. Amen. Come on, give me one more hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to preach to you this morning. I guess you already know that. For it is written. Amen. We look at everything that we go through in life. There's always something there. Sometimes, you know, we look at when this country was formed. There was a constitution that was wrote on things that we could do, the rights that we had, and everything. So, so see, with that constitution, everybody tries to change what the constitution has to say. But our forefathers wrote in that constitution for it to never be changed. But yet, sometimes people want to change it, but yet they can't change it. Amen? Because why? Because it was in there. They have to go through a lot of process. They have to go through a lot of things to be able to change the Constitution of the United States. But there, where there's one word that can never be changed. You say, Pastor, what is that? There's one word that has been wrote and that can never be changed. There's one road, there's one book, there's some scriptures, there's some word that's been written that will never be changed and will never will get changed. You say, Pastor, what is that? That's the Word of God. The Word of God will never change. The Word of God will always be the same. The Word of God will never, never do anything to hurt you. Amen? Because why? Because it's the Word of God. Me and Kay were talking the other day. Again, we get into some conversations sometimes about the Bible. Because you see, we're reading the King James Version of the Bible. Some of those books were left out. Some of the books of the Bible were left out. And, 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 and I guess that we got the ones that really mean something to me. But we were thinking, we were talking today, wonder what was in some of those other books of the Bible. And then my question was, and I, I, you know, I'm just crazy sometimes. Because, you know, e, we say we, we read the, the true Word of God, right? We say the Bible is the true Word of God. Now, now the, the devil sometimes makes people think some crazy things. Y'all don't know 
don't ever think no crazy things, do you? He makes me think some crazy things. And I was like, well, if that's the truth, if there's things taken out, then are we really reading the true Word of God? I got you stumped now. Yeah. Y'all look. I was waiting for somebody to jump up and say, Hallelujah, Sean, you should have done it. You know, but you should have jumped up and said, Praise Jesus. But are we really? But we are reading the true word of God. But you see, it is written, has been, or it is brought to the word of God 31 times in the Bible. 31 times in the Bible that the word it is written is there. Because why? Because here's what happens. Let me explain what it means to say it is written. When you see the word of God in the Bible says when it is written, somewhere God has wrote that scripture down for you to read. Somewhere in the Bible when it says it is written, it, it is in the word of God that the, that the Lord had wrote down. When Jesus came in, when Jesus went into the temple, went in the wilderness 40 days, he took the word of God with him. And that's why he could come to the devil when the devil tempted him. That's why he could come to him and he has some great to stand on. I'm here to tell you this morning, you got ground to stand on. When you're believing the true word of God, when you're believing the word of God that you're reading this morning, you got some grounds to stand on. Because why? Because when Jesus was in the, in the wilderness fasting, he come out hungry. But yet, who was the first one there to go ahead and try to feed him? It was the devil. The devil was the very first one when Jesus came out of the wilderness. The devil was right there in his face trying to make him think, well, you're not who you say you are. But Jesus knew who he said he was. Because why? Because of the time he was able to read, to the time he was 13 when he was in the temple, and he was he was he was preaching and teaching and listening to those all those people talk. Even that time he was reading the word of God. Because why? Because they had the Old Testament Bible to read. But yet he had all those scriptures that he could read. And every time that somebody would ask him a question, he would say, It is written. So when he says it is written, it's written somewhere in the Bible that you know when the devil comes your way and says you ain't who you say you are, or you ain't never saved, or you ain't never healed, you got a ground to stand on this morning. You can look at the devil right now and say, No, I mean, can you stop? It is written in the Word of God. Amen. Wow. Jesus said that. Oh, my goodness. When he went up on the mountain and the devil started tempting him, the very first thing that Jesus would say, It is written. I'm here to tell you this morning, when the enemy comes and tempts you, when the devil comes and tell you, you ain't who you say you are, or you ain't what God says you are, you need to look your right dead in his face and let me tell you something. Yes, it is written, because when he saved me, he saved me, because he made me a child of the most high God. That's why I can say, it is written this morning. So if he smite you this morning, you need to look in his eyes and say, it is written. That every solution that you can find out. Amen. Amen. But I'm sure glad that Jesus read the Bible, aren't you? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Because Amen. you can't read the Bible. Jesus, the Son of God. Just because you're Christian, don't mean you don't have read the Bible. Just because you're a Christian and you're, and you're saved, does that mean you don't have to read your Bible? No, it means you need to be in that Bible, learning what the Bible says. Because you see, I think there's coming a time. Sometimes you don't have your Bible with you when the enemy attacks you. Sometimes when you're driving down the road, or sometimes when you're you're working or wherever you're at, when the enemy comes to try to attack you, you don't always have the Word of God with you. But I'm here to tell you this morning, when you read the Word of God and it gets down inside of you, I'm here to tell you there's something that grows up inside of you when the enemy comes because you can look at him and say, it is written. You ain't got no authority over me because the Bible tells me that I have authority over you. When I speak your name,
We think we can walk down the East Road and never have to fight nothing. Yes, sir. I'm here to tell you. Don't, get, don't, don't, don't take her on. We all need to be saved, but you had more better when you was a sinner than you did when you saved. Yes. Can I explain that to you? Yep. Because you didn't have the devil fighting you like you did. Yes. 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 Because when you live for the devil, the devil ain't got a reason to fight you. When you live for him without living for Christ, he ain't got a reason to fight you. You see, sometimes we give our heart to Jesus, and that's when it starts. I'd love to tell you this morning, if you're not saved, that you give your heart to Jesus, and it's going to be a bed of roses every, every step that you do. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus himself told us in his word. Because why? Because he said, it is written in the word of God that if they do these things to me, they're going to do them to you. If they persecute me, Flips, do 20 somersaults, jump 15 hurdles, and do all this stuff before I can get back to where God had me one time. That's religious thinking. Amen. That's the devil telling you that you can't be restored. Amen. But Jesus said, Let me tell you, it is written that if you come to me and ask me for forgiveness, just because you stumped your toe, I, I wish I could ask you, has anybody ever stumped their toe in this place? I know you need to know. Raise your hand. Amen. Because if you raise your hand, we're going to pray for you. <laughs> because if you say, oh, that's just me. I know we're going to pray. I'm going to have an altar call right now. Because I'm here to tell you, you ain't never failed. That God won't forgive you. Oh, oh pastor, you're the pastor. You're supposed to be the man of God that never fails. I can do one thing. I probably have to ask for forgiveness yesterday. I probably had to ask this morning for him to come to church. Because I don't know. Somebody might have pulled out in front of me and I might have said something I shouldn't say. Because it may be about grace. You ever been going down the road to deer from out in front of me and you say, oh my goodness, I'm just just get you. See, sometimes we don't always think the way we should think. Sometimes we don't always say the things we should say. Oh, Pastor, what do you mean? I mean you, we don't die. No, I'm here to tell you. That's why it says you have an apple to a father that every time that you mess up, that you can go to him and ask him for forgiveness. He won't forgive you this morning. It is written in the Word of God. Amen. I didn't give up before this morning. Go ahead and see him when you want to see him. I'm just saying when you mess up, when you mess up, when you mess up. Yes, it's true. Amen. Yes. Why? Because it is written in the Word of God. Oh, but Pastor, I'm just going to read a few statistics here this morning, okay? Oh, but Pastor, you don't know how I see it. I don't care how you see it. Oh, but Pastor, you, you don't know what I did in life. I don't care what you've done in your life. And you know what? Jesus don't either. The only thing He cares about is you coming to Him this morning and forgiving you, for Him to forgive you of your sin and go ahead and be the King, a child of the Most High. That's what He's worried about this morning, is you turning your life over. He ain't worried about did last night. He ain't worried about what you did 20 years ago. He ain't worried. He's worried about it this moment. Whether or not that you're a child of God, that you listen to His key, listen to His word, and listen to his, what the Spirit of God has to say over your life. Amen. Amen. Glory. Oh. I said, Pastor, you're getting away from it. It's written for No. We can look at those 11 scriptures when He tempted Jesus. He tempts you like that every day. When you get on fire for Jesus, that's the very first thing the devil wants to do. He says, nah, you don't need all that. Nah, you don't need all that. That's just a myth. What I'm happy here to tell you. It ain't a myth. It's reality. We, we live with Him. We depend upon Him. So when the devil wants to to Jesus, he said, I mean, you can have all this. He said, I don't want my love. I've got what I need. My Father gave it to me. See, the devil wanted to, wanted to, I don't see, can y'all agree with me? Y'all can just say amen and praise the devil's stupid. Amen. 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 You know, normally when you get defeated so many times, you just say, well, I can get there. I, I won't go back there because I'm defeated, but he's stupid. I don't 
can't tell him anything. Y'all can't tell me stuff. As you should be using those kinds of words in the earth. So he stopped it. He stopped it and ain't healing it. Because why? Because he comes back to you every time to try to fight you, try to make you fall, try to make you stumble. But yet he never can listen. Because why? Because here's what you should say. It is written. And it ain't written that you said it was written. When I read my Bible, it's a red letter that said, when Jesus said it is written, and when Jesus said it is written, I'm here to tell you there's some, there's some power behind that. There's something that you can stand on. When the enemy comes your way and tells you that you didn't get healed, you can say, oh no, it is written in the Word of God. And he took the stripes upon my back for my healing, and I'm healed. When you get saved, the devil will come to you and say, you need to be saved. You say, oh yes, I need to get saved because the blood of Jesus that he died on. He's split hell out of him. Oh my goodness. How do you know that? How do you know 
brother, you don't know what happened from the time the last breath was about ready to leave till he took the last breath or she took the last breath. There could have been a visitation of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost. It is written. Ten commandments. Well, Pastor, we don't have to live on the Ten Commandments. Well, I think you've got to live on the whole Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. Oh, Pastor, when Jesus came and tore down the veil, we don't have to listen to that. Okay, you tell me we don't have to live by Ten Commandments? Well, let me refresh this. Sean, I believe it tells us somewhere that Jesus talks about you need to live by the Ten Commandments. Amen. 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 Am I not right? That's right. He teaches about the Ten Commandments. That's right. So it's written. Man. From the very beginning of chapter 1 to the very last chapter of Revelation, yes, it is written. And you know who wrote it? Uh, you said it was inspired by the Holy Ghost, right? Man. It doesn't look the Word of God said. It said it was inspired by the Holy Ghost. <coughs> so you know where that comes from? So the Word of God is the true Word of God. When you're in time of trouble, then you've got Scripture inside of you that you can say it is written. See, there's a lot of things that we there's promises you want to stand upon and you want to pray those promises back to God. Because why? Because, you know what? When He says that you can be blessed, you should say, Lord, I'm blessed. Amen. I'm blessed. When He says that you can be healed, you can say, Lord, I'm healed. When he says, I'm going to go away to prepare your place, you should say, yeah, one day I'm going to live in heaven. Yes, man. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. See, that's something about it. See, that, that's what kicked all us off because when, when the devil's having a, hate, a good old party down in hell, when they thought they had Jesus, they thought they'd be killed. And when he knocked him, when he came down to, to, to the gates of hell, he put a few fires out while he was there. It is written. 
When, when, when Jesus tells us that when, when your praises go up, the blessings come down. It is written. Yes. When Jesus says that you are the child of the Most High God, it is written, yes. you are a child of the Most High God. Yes. When He says that don't lay those, your, your, your treasures up on this world, but lay your treasures up in heaven, that's the true word of God. It is written. Mm -hmm. You say, Pastor, what are you trying to say about my treasures? He says, don't lay your treasures up in this world. Right. Lay your treasures up in heaven. Because you know what? There's a treasure box up there that when you need treasures to grab out of it. When you're going through a trial and you ain't got two nickels to rub together and, and you're going through something, there's a treasure box in heaven that you can open up and God will send a blessing down from you. Yes, because He said, don't lay your treasures up in this world. Lay them up in heaven. When He tells us in the Word of God that that He'll never leave us, He'll never forsake us, He'll be with us always till the end. It's the written, it is written, it's the true Word of God. Amen. Amen. When He tells us in His Word that, that, that when He can lay hands on you, that, that He said when He called it, when He taught His disciples before He was going to heaven, He said, greater things you shall do when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, it is written in the Word of God. So we should be standing upon that. Thank you, Jesus. Everything that's wrote in the Word of God, we should be standing upon it. Because why? Because it's the true Word of God. And he tells us that we can have abundance of harvest. Yes. We should be able to stand up on that because why? Thank you, Jesus. The devil's trying to see me text me. <laughs> <laughs> when we stand upon the true word of God and he says it is written, blessings are going to fall from heaven. When he tells us in his word that, that he went away to the Paris of place, it is written. When he tells us in his word that one day I'm coming back to get you, it is written in his word. It's the true word of God. When he tells us we don't have to suffer because he is the one who takes care of our suffering, it's the true word of God because it is written. When he says, cast your cares upon me and let me carry your care, Jesus himself said it is written, let me carry your care. Let me carry all your burdens. Let me carry all your hurts. Yes. Let me carry all your rejection. Yes. Because you see, there's so many people hurting today. There's so, so many people being rejected today. And Jesus says, don't worry about it. Let me carry it. You see, Pastor, it's hard not to, it's hard not to carry hurt feelings around. I know it is. I know it is. But Jesus himself said, let me take care of it. Let me take care of it. <clears throat> Because why? Because it is written in His Word that He is who He says He is. When the devil tells you that all this stuff that in Matthew 24 and when all this stuff that Jesus talked about, it ain't going to happen. You need to look at Him and say, it is written in the Word of God. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. When Jesus went to the wedding and He filled up all when they ran out of wine and, 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 and He would come in and fill all it is written in the Word. All these miracles can happen in the Word. Why? Because Jesus said, it is written. You know how he knew that? Because when he was in the wilderness, I told you before, when he was in the wilderness, he was reading the scripture. He was reading the Old Testament. About all these things. He even went to the book of Isaiah where prophecy came about he was coming. There was coming on the side that's going to take care of all of us. That was going to take your bruises. That's going to die for your iniquity. That's going to take die for your sin. And that he could be able to be that sacrifice for you and me. Jesus knew that he was that. When God was searching through heaven, he was looking for somebody to come here to be that sacrifice. And Jesus himself says, let me go. I want to be that sacrifice. I want to be that one that I know that the day that I was born and very soon I was going to be crucified I was going to die on the cross. But yet again on the third day, I was going to raise up and be alive. See, Jesus knew all this stuff. But he knew he had a purpose and a destiny. That from the time he was born to the time he was crucified the time he rose. He knew what his purpose was. And his purpose was to tell us it is written. It is written in the Word of God. But yes. every time the devil tries to come and tempt you, you need to look at him and say it is written. Yes. When he tells you that you ain't nothing, you need to tell him it is written. Yes. I am a true child of God. Amen. I am the child of the Most High King. Yes. Amen. There ain't Amen. no other king in this world could be higher than Jesus. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. You're rich. 
this morning. You've got Jesus in your heart. You're rich. Amen. Amen. Pastor, how do you know that? Well, let me just take this thing very closely. Because why? Because one day you will walk on the streets of gold. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, you mean it's going to be like the gold on your finger? No. Because the Bible says pure gold. Pure gold is clear. Yes, it is. Can you imagine pure gold? And he says, you're going to be able to go through and look at the walls of Jasper and the gates of pearls. You're going to be able to live in a city to where there's no more dying, no more heartache, no more sickness, no more pain. You're going to be able to wake up in the morning. I got a male boat speaking about to kill me for about six months now. I can't wait to get ahead of him. So long goes away. <laughs> But you want to be able to live with Jesus. Yes, Lord. The one that said there'll be no more tears. Because why do you not have no sadness? Why the hell do you know that, Pastor? Because it is written in the Word of God. Amen. And whatever he said is written in the Word of God that's going to happen. Yes, amen. We can't change it. We might, we might say that we can't, but we can't. As I read you the other talk when I've opened up my sermon. The Constitution of the United States, we try to change it all the time to make it fit to how we want it to be. We try to change it so many times to try to make it to work. It makes us feel better. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're not going to change the Word of God that is going to make you feel better. Because I believe, I believe that every time we come to the house of God, you are to be uncomfortable. You say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm that uncomfortable when I come to the house of God. Then why do I want to come to the house of God? Because why? Because here's my thing. I want to come to the house of God because if I'm doing ain't what, ain't what God wants me to do or I'm doing something wrong, Lord, you can be me and make me feel uncomfortable. Can I go ahead and get ready? Can I go ahead and get rid of it? So where I can do what you call me to do. It is written. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. See, Jesus read the old, he read the, he read the Ten Commandments. How you know that, Pastor? Because why? Because he told the devil, you can't have no other gods before you. Right? So he knew. He read it. He knew what it was saying. Because every time you read the Bible, I'm going to phrase this right here. Every time you read the Bible, when it says it is written, Somewhere in this Bible, it is real. Yeah, that's right. It is real. So you see, and then it went on to the last verse. It said that the devil let him, left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. When you start telling the devil that it's real, that he ain't got no place in your life, that he ain't got no place in your situation, you might be going through something this morning. You need to look at the devil and say, "You ain't got no, you ain't got, you ain't got no." in my situation. Right. You might be struggling this morning. You need to look at that and say, you ain't got no place in my struggle. That's right. You ain't got no place in my struggle. Because it ain't your struggle, it's mine and Jesus' struggle. Amen. And you might as well hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Because <laughs> I ain't listening to you. Why? Because my future looks brighter. When I know Jesus is in my heart. Yes. The future looks so much brighter when I know that Jesus is on my side. Yes. It looks so much brighter that your future looks so much brighter this morning when you can open up the Word of God and say, It is written. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It is well with my soul. Everything that is 
sent to dedicate us in this Bible, which is the truth. Amen. That's right. All the healings, all the questions that you have, all the answers that you need this morning is in the Bible. Because why? Because John, John James, Jesus started out in verse 4 when the devil came, or verse chapter 4 when the devil came to Timothy and said, It is written. And how do I know what is written? Because I've been in the wilderness. And I've been reading the Word of God. And everything you feel that I see that what you're tempting me with, God's already told me that it ain't true. That what you're telling me ain't true this morning. What the devil's telling you this morning ain't true. What the devil's telling you this morning ain't true. You say, Pastor, what do you want me? What the devil's telling you this morning, that you ain't that you ain't where you need to be with Jesus, it's a lie. Because why? Because you know what he wants you to do? He wants you to get your focus on you not being where you need to be with Jesus. You're a Christian, right? You know Jesus' voice. If you ain't where you need to be, you listen to Jesus' voice, not the devil's voice. <laughs> the devil sometimes gets credit for things he don't even do. He said it back saying, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, just give me credit for all of it. I don't care. Sometimes it's Jesus trying to get her attention. And what he says in the Word of God, it is true. Jesus says you can have life and have it more abundant. Because why? Because it's real. Jesus says, for his Father gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It is written in the Word of God that if you believe upon him and ask him in your heart, that you will have everlasting life. Would you stand with me this morning? I don't know your situation, I don't know your heart, I don't know where you stand with Jesus, but I do know one thing. I know the Word of God is true. I know the Word of God is, 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 is a true Word of God. And I know this morning that if you need Him, He's here. If you need Him, He's here. Whenever Him down there in my clothes place this morning, nobody look around. It's not reference to me, but reference to the Holy Ghost this morning. And Jesus in His presence. If you're in this place this morning, you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus. I don't know your heart. Only Jesus knows your heart this morning. If you're in this place this morning and you need Jesus to come into your heart, I just want you to simply wait back. Anybody? Anybody? By the Holy Ghost is speaking. If you're in this place this morning you say, Pastor, I need the Lord to do something in my life. The devil's been up on me. The devil's been doing this. The devil's been doing that. He's been telling me this. He's been telling me that. He's been trying to make me believe this and trying to make me believe that. If that's you this morning, I just want you to simply wait back this morning. Anybody? Yes, God bless. Anybody else? Yes, God bless. Yes. Anybody else this morning? Anybody else? Anybody else? Here's what I want you to do right now. I feel led to do this. I feel led to do this this morning. I just feel it in my spirit. Would you pray this prayer with me? Say, Father, Father forgive me, for I am lost. To come into my heart. Wash away my sin. Let me let you be number one in my life. You're my Savior. You're my, you're, you're my Redeemer. And I accept you into my life right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Still with every hand bowed in right close this morning. If you pray that prayer right now, I just want you to sit away, baby. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna embarrass you. I, don't, I just feel led to do this this morning. If you pray that prayer this morning, I just want you to lift up your hands and say, I pray that prayer this morning. Yes, God bless, God bless. God bless. Praise you, Jesus. Now, if you raise your hand this morning, here's what I want you to do. Because why? Because you said, Pastor, you're not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to embarrass you. But Jesus said that if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. If you accepted Jesus in your heart right now, if you raise your hand this morning, I want you to simply come. All I want to do is pray with you. Come on, if you raise your hand this morning, I just want you to come. I just want you to come right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. If you, if you slipped up your hand this morning that you need prayer that the enemy's just been all over you and trying to make you not believe the true word of God, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. Come on, come on, come on.
you just lift up your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you need a touch in your body right now, if you need a touch in your body, you need healing in your body, I want you to come. I want you to come right now. I want you to come. If you need a touch in your body, come on, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to take care of God's business. Here's here to say, come on, if you need a touch in your body, if you know somebody needs a touch in their body, I want you to come. If you know somebody needs a healing touch in their body, I want you to come. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We worship you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Shout, I want you to come help me pray. I want you to 